Toy Chat is not a children's channel. This video is intended for adult gift givers and collectors. Hey guys, welcome to Toy Chat. This is Max. And Sang. We spent the past weekend in Los Angeles, California, attending the Rainbow High vs. Shadow High pop-up experience. In today's video, we'll be sharing a summarized overview of everything the event offered, including vlog footage from inside. Although we will address thoughts and opinions on the event, both our own and what we learned from other fans, in a general sense today, make sure to stay tuned for the next episode of our Collector's Corner podcast for a deeper discussion of the pop-up's pros and cons and how our experience may have differed from others. All right, from here, let's dish the main deets of this event. This was the first event of its kind and gave MJ's fandom the opportunity to celebrate their love for these ultra popular dolls live in person. First announced on April 29th by the Rainbow and Shadow High socials, event details were left a bit mysterious <laughs> up until the tickets went live on May 4th. On the purchase landing page, the event was advertised as follows. In a 90 minute session, fans will enter the world of Rainbow High and Shadow High with interactive elements that inspire creativity and Instagrammable moments and an exclusive one-time only shopping experience with top secret surprises and products that cannot be found anywhere else. They were three tiers of admission purchase ranging from $25 to $85, offering collectors edition t-shirts and shopping discounts at the higher tiers. The main event took place on Sunday, May 22nd at 8175 Melrose Avenue, Los Angeles. Sang and I also attended the exclusive first look on Saturday the 21st, which was invite only via MGA representatives. Our buddy Michael, who has made a couple appearances in prior videos on our channel, was able to join us. Right outside was a huge painted wall mural of the Rainbow High Series 4 characters, with Shadow High graffitied across the bottom. There was also a rainbow-colored Let Your True Colors Shine design along the same street side. The entrance of the pop-up featured two large walls of lockers, meticulously decorated and themed after different characters from the series. It may look like just a colorful photo op, but if you inspected the interiors, there were a few hidden surprises. Some of the lockers featured teasers of what could be upcoming new products, like the Rainbow High Mini Accessories Studio expected in Fall 2022. If you guys noticed any other Easter eggs in these lockers, let us know in the comments. Huge photo backdrops installations were placed just past the lockers, the first being a rainbow colored runway with the Rainbow High logo above, and a cardboard cutout of Georgia Bloom. There were cutouts of several characters throughout the whole pop-up. This photo op installation projects rainbow shadows behind you if you were to swap out the Georgia cutout with yourself. One of the prettiest installations was an LED rainbow light display, which makes for some fun and dramatic Instagram moments. On the first look day, Rainbow and Shadow High themed food and drinks were provided. There were colorful popsicles offered on both days of the event as well. Maybe the most photo-worthy installations was life-size version of the Rainbow and Shadow High doll boxes, which you can pose inside. From what we observed, this is probably one of the most popular spots to take photos at the event. Just across from the box displays was a school ID creation station where you could choose your side and have either a rainbow or shadow high ID imprinted with your name and photo. A dark room just past that offered black light pens to leave your artwork or signature of choice on a shared mural wall. Of course, Toy Chat had to leave its mark. You could follow a rainbow colored series of arches into the other side of the pop-up, which was more shadow high focused. This area contained even more photo ops, including a grayscale backdrop with an SH logo mirror. You could pose alongside shadow high character cutouts like Luna Madison. On the opposing side were a set of ring stairs for posing and another shadow high backdrop themed after the neon light design we saw in early teasers of the rival series. Clips from the animated series played on the wall, and as a final attraction in the Shadow High section, you could choose from a variety of six different tote bag designs to take home. The process of painting these on was pretty cool to watch in person. The pop-up's final room is all about the dolls. Right upon entering, there is a huge display of almost every single doll released so far in both Rainbow High and Shadow High including our first up-close looks at Rainbow High Series 4, the Storm Twins, and Ainsley Slater. 
We're pretty sure that at least one doll of every single character the brand has ever released were on display here, with an exception of one. Can you spot who didn't make the cut? Let us know in the comments! This same section was also dedicated to the actual retail shop, where fans could make their doll purchases. There were a lot of wonder and speculation over what would be available to buy here, given that early teases of this event were pretty vague regarding the doll products. Ultimately, it was confirmed that the never-before-released dolls mentioned in the event promos were in fact the Storm Twins, Veronica and Naomi, as well as the Ainsley Slater Trunk Show set. We were able to pick up each of these sets in our first day attending, so stay tuned to our channel for in-depth reviews of Ainsley and the Twins. We'd like to thank MJ for allowing us to redeem one free doll for free as part of our exclusive first look. What a fun surprise! Shadow High didn't get to have all the fun. All six Rainbow High Series 4 dolls were also available to purchase at the event, and we managed to pick those up as well. We'll have a lot to review in the coming weeks, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Some merchandise completely exclusive to this event were unique Rainbow and Shadow High shirt designs, offered in a full spectrum of rainbow or grayscale colorations. The logos are holographic and look pretty nice in person. You've got to pick a side, of course, but Sang and I both took home one shirt for each school. There was also an option to purchase $50 mystery boxes stated to contain up to $150 value. Sang and I ended up purchasing four of these total and unfortunately ended up with many items we already had, including a Slumber Party Robin, Jet Dawson doll, and Kaya Hart. We also now have an excess of Rainbow High color change cars to hand out to some friends and nieces and nephews. Rainbow Hide journals also seems to be a common item in these boxes, though we did hear some folks pulled Series 4 dolls out of these on Day 2. On your way out of the pop-up, there were a variety of dolls displayed museum-style in glass cases, as well as the Rainbow High house and a few additional display items. As mentioned earlier, we attended both days of the event, the invite-only Saturday and the general public Sunday. If you're curious about the differences, these are the things we notice. Most notably, the most popular doll items sold out within the first hour or two of the second day. Because there was a larger turnout than MGA expected, rather than allowing everyone in at once, attendees were split into groups allowed in at different time frames. The Storm Twins were gone almost immediately following the first group let in, and Ainsley vanished not long after. Rainbow High Series 4 remained available for a bit, but still sold out long before the event ended. Eventually, other older dolls like Jet Dawson and Kaya Hearts were placed out to purchase instead. We noticed that the line for retail got much longer on Sunday, at one point extending through the entire event venue and out the front door. This essentially meant that almost the entire space was dedicated for waiting in line for the shop which we heard took some later groups upward to one to two hours before reaching the front. Many fans took major issue with this and expressed their disappointment on the Rainbow High social pages. If you attended a public event on Sunday, how did you feel about the product availability? Let us know in the comments. Despite very limited quantities of the new dolls and a few rearranged positions of the character cutouts, most of the pop-ups, installations, and attractions remained the same between Saturday and Sunday. The other key differences we noticed were no food or drink offerings outside of the popsicles, and on day two, we learned there was an additional secret hidden in the lockers. If you entered a special code based on an easter egg from the animated series, you could discover a voucher for a free doll. All in all, I personally really enjoyed this experience and do think MGA went above and beyond in terms of artsy installation and atmosphere. Honestly, I've seen much less at other pop-ups or convention-style events that charged even more for entry. That being said, I can definitely acknowledge that Sang and I may be wearing rose-colored glasses in our perspective. If you did end up missing out on the Storm Twins or Ainsley yourself, don't worry too much because they are already popping up at many U.S. targets at slightly lower prices, interestingly. I completely understand why some folks would leave this event feeling satisfied, while others may be feeling something else entirely. 
Whichever category you fall under, I'd highly suggest making use of the feedback surveys MGA sent out after the event. As we've learned many times in the past, MGA does listen to their fans even when they're unhappy, so I think it's important to keep that communication strong in as respectful of a way as we can. Since the event ended, MGA has in fact already worked to remedy these concerns by emailing all attendees with discount code links to apply towards a future purchase, addressing the issues of limited product at the pop-up. We'll dive much deeper into all of these conversations and opinions in our upcoming podcast, so comment below what your thoughts were on this pop-up if you attended, and what you'd like to hear more about from us in our next episode. Thank you for joining us for this vlog adventure and overview of the pop-up event. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't. Check out our full Rainbow High playlist in the description below, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye.